Good evening, everyone, and welcome to BT's Fly Tying Friday. Tonight, the 20th of January, 2023, we have the famous Barry Webster from Farmers Branch, Texas. And the weekly tip is going to be about wading cleats and quill bodies. And after those two items, we have a special surprise that showed up in the mail today. And we'll talk about that a little further downstream. But for now, we're the Beaties from Boise, Idaho. And joining us uh, tonight, Barry Webster. And you can take a drink of coffee there, Barry, or if that's what's in there. <laughs> and uh, I'll read the introduction. The introduction, Barry Webster lives in Farmers Branch, Texas, a Dallas suburb with his wife, Teresa. He has two grown daughters and granddaughters who, and a granddaughter who is best fly tying and fishing buddy, along with his golden retriever, Wally. He is retired from the IBM Corporation after career in technical sales management. Barry holds a BS and an MS in mechanical engineering from Texas Tech University. He is a licensed professional engineer in Texas. Previous to IBM, Barry worked for a consulting engineering firm in Houston called Lockwood, Andrews, and Noonan, Noonan. Barry has been active in the fly fishing area by serving on the boards of the Fort Worth Fly Fishers. He was a tying director and on the board of the Dallas Fly Fishers. He is an active member in both clubs. He is also on the board of directors for the Tencil Texas Council of FFI. Barry is currently serving on the board of directors for Fly Fishers International, where he chairs the membership committee and as a member of the Fly Tying Board of Governors. Barry has been an active demonstrating fly tire at several FFI expos, the Salbug Rendezvous in Mountain Home, the TRWD Fly Festival, and the Texas Fly in Brewfest. Gary, Barry is also a member of the Roadkill Roundtable, a group in the Dallas-Fort Worth area that has been tying together since the early 70s. Thanks, Al. I appreciate that. Well, I've got a couple of nymph patterns uh, tonight for you, and you can see there's there's an actual picture of uh, a live helgramite there on the top. Um, the this uh, pattern kind of came about after a presentation by a guy named Robert Younghands uh, to the Dallas Fly Fishers. And he had done a on-stream entomology class, and Robert was uh, uh, enthusiastic, I guess is the nicest way I could say it, about the number and size of Helgramite nymphs that he found in our local streams in here. And I've been familiar with Helgramites all my life. They're very, very prominent in all the streams around here. And I've known that it was uh, a great bass attractor for a, a, a long time. But uh, in chats with Robert, I got uh, a lot more into the actual bugs and things in the life cycle and uh, started messing around with some patterns. And there, there are some Helgramite patterns out there on the uh, internet. And I will just to say that I... Uh, I created this pattern because I stole shamelessly from three or four different Helgramite patterns and used pieces and stems of different ones to kind of come up with this, but it's one that I like quite a bit. And um, I think you'll uh, find it's, it's it's got an interesting way of attaching the legs. Um, and again, this is something that I saw off of an internet pattern. So. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started on that. And you can see a finished pattern here in the vise. Um, and it's, it's a fairly straightforward tie, um, usually on a, a fairly good size shank. And, you know, when you're looking at, okay, what size should I tie these in? I think you can tie them in any size you want to. Uh, I mentioned Robert Younghands getting involved with a, a stream anatomy class and tying one in. He found a Helgramite uh, nymph when he was playing in the Trinity River here locally that was three and a half inches long. 
So um, I think you can probably tie these whatever size you want. Uh, I'm going to tie this, I think, on a size uh, six, and it's like a 3XL long streamer hook. Uh, so get the thread started on there. And the first thing I'm going to do is tie in a little um, bump of dubbing onto the hook. They just kind of go straight back. And so I like to put a little bump in there out of uh, dubbing to give them something to flare against. And then I'm going to take a black turkey biot. It's going to take and select that. So hopefully it flares out. I, this is awfully straight turkey biot, so it really doesn't flare much, but that's why that little bump of uh, dubbing helps the profile on it. And if you look at the the Helgramite, and I, I didn't mention earlier, it's it's also known as a Dobson fly nymph. Um, I didn't know that until I started messing around with uh, the conversations with Robert. And I've looked up what a Dobson fly looks like. And it's interesting for all of the Helgramites that you see in the local um, rivers that we have here, I don't think I've ever seen a Dobson fly, you know, coming out of the water, flying around or anything. So I'm interested if other folks have seen them fairly often. Um, the nymph itself spends most of its life cycle kind of crawling around on the bottom. And it's a fairly predatory nymph. Um, I think it attacks other things. And so I like to put a little weight on this to get it down into the bottom of the water column. Um, I thought seriously about trying to tie this upside down so the hook point would ride up. I haven't, I haven't got to that yet, but uh, my further experimentations, I will do that. So I'm going to tie in several things now at this point, one of which is some uh, black brassy wire. Um, okay, so I've got that in there. The next thing I'm going to tie in is some thin skin. Um, and this is actually called bug back. Um, I, I get a lot of stuff from Fly Tires Dungeon. Real, really good stuff, and I've got a lot of their products, and this is one called Bug Back, but it's any thin skin product or anything like that would work fine for what we're going to do here. And it, it takes you quite a while because you want kind of a tapered body on this, and it takes a while to build that up, and for what we're doing on it, it really doesn't make any difference, so I just started tying it in chenille, and that makes it really quick and easy to do. And I don't think it affects the pattern whatsoever. So I'm just going to wrap that chenille. And just some thread wraps to secure that down nicely. It's going to be covered up very nicely, so it's really just kind of filling in things under the pattern. All right, then I'm going to take that thin skin and I'm going to pull it with a little tension on it. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap that up a little bit, just to make sure I have it down real good. Clip off the excess. And hopefully you can see I've just got that laid in there on the top. And if it's got any, any wrinkles in it or anything, you can stick a bodkin in there and kind of straighten it out. Then I'm going to take the wire and I'm going to wrap, wrap the wire over the top of this and create it. 
a segmented section in there. And I'm gonna tie off that wire and then helicopter that off. Okay, um, here's the, the magical sexy part of this thing. I have an interesting tool, um, but I've taken um, some rubber legs or perfect rubber, and, and I like perfect rubber. I've taken one strand of that and cut it um, into segments. I'm going to insert it under the thin skin. So it's between two of the wire wraps and through the thin skin. And I'm going to grab one of those bug legs. And if you'll notice the lever that sticks out on this thing, when it goes back through, it's going to clamp shut. So I'm just going to simply pull it through by putting that leg in there and pull that through. So I'm going to do that under each one. So I've got all those through there and they're, they're really just sitting there under the um, thin skin. And so that if, if there's any of them that are on kind of a wonky angle or doing something funny, you can adjust them fairly easily and kind of get them to go where you want. Now, here's the reason that I've turned those, um, you know, short on one side and long on the other. Something that's clear gel, tacky glue, um, I, this is the same stuff I use to glue the feathers together. If I'm uh, tying a Rangeley Lake or Carrie Stevens type uh, fly, if I'm building the uh, wings for those, I use this stuff to glue it together. And its claim to fame is it adheres pretty well, but it never becomes brittle. It still stays flexible. So I'm going to take a dab of this and I've just run a dab on a sticky notepad and I'm going to take my bodkin, not a, not a huge amount, but a dollop on there. And what I'm going to do, you should not put them on the short side. You should put them on the long side. Simply pull those legs. back up under there and now it's dragged that silly glue or a tacky glue back up under it and that's going to set up but it's going to stay um, very flexible and so they're they're now attached and I've, I've played with this a little bit after that tacky glue sets up um, I think you'd break the legs before you pull them back out of the center of that. Add a little more dubbing to the front of this um, because I've, I need to create a head section. All right, um, now I'm gonna go back to my turkey biots, select two more of them. If you look at the actual, um, um, Helgramite, it's got a pretty nasty looking little pincer and it's, it's not real large. Um, and it's, it's just like a little set of claws. I, I tend to tie these a little bigger than that. And so it's kind of an overly stylistic look, if you will. Yeah. If you just tied them on, they would go straight out in front of the, uh, put it over where I attached those biots. And this is again, helping with that kind of head profile again. And I'm gonna come in and just snug my scissors up there and get rid of 
the butt ends of those buyouts. Trying carefully not to clip off a leg section here. Okay, um, I'm gonna push those back and apply real quick. Whip finish to this. And trim off my thread. Use my fingers to kind of pull those forward again. And I'm gonna take a pair of uh, tweezers, try to do this to the side so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just gonna grab those back at a point and kind of pinch it. And then I'm gonna use my fingers to fold that biot. And so I'm just creating a, a bend point and I'm gonna bend it with my fingers. And that creates kind of a pincher pattern that you'll see there. They're not exceedingly long. They're uh, maybe a, a body width and length, and they're kind of a little longer at the front and then taper to the back. So I'm gonna take my scissors in, lay them in and create a tapered profile on both sides. And that's the Helgramite, burrowing mayfly nymph. And um, you'll, you'll find a common theme here. I stole this shamelessly from Barry or Clark's book, The Featherbender, help but tinkering with patterns on stuff. So I've made some modifications to it. And I'll, I'll tell you as we go through this, what they are. Here's the burrowing mayfly nymph that we're gonna tie. And you'll notice it's got the typical tri-tail on there. It's got things to represent the gills. It's got things to represent the legs um, and it's got a wing case on it. So I'll show you how we tie that one. I think this is an eight 3XL streamer hook. Go ahead and get some thread started on there. And I'm gonna use two types of ostrich hurl on this. Okay, so I'm gonna take the smaller um, olive colored ostrich and I'm gonna pluck off three of the hurls. I'm gonna tie these in three individually because I really wanna accent the split all stream together, but you can see I've got a nice split on the three tails there. Okay, um, at this point, um, I'm going to build a dubbed body, if I can find, and this is more of that fly tires, dungeon, bullfrog dubbing, and this one is a blue wing olive color, which is a nice kind of olive shade in there. And there's, they're really long strands and they just, I mean, they it, it ties in wonderfully. As we said, we tie these for our own edification more than that of the fish. Okay, I've got that tied in there and I'm gonna wrap this up and I'm gonna try to do slightly spaced adjacent, but not touching wraps. So now I've got a nice, tapered body and um, what um, Barry Ord Clark does at this point is he takes a nice pair of razor scissors 
and he gives that a nice little haircut all across the back. So now I've got gill representation down there and run just a very fine bead of UV. And so what I've done is run a bead of UV down that and I've locked in that ostrich hurl. So now if a fish comes in and bites that, breaks the rachis on that ostrich hurl, it's still gonna come loose, but it's only gonna come loose in one wrap. And so it can't go any further than that. All right, now I need to bring, build a, uh, a wing case. So I'm gonna take some synthetic material. And this is again, a this is a fly tire dungeon product. I do find it is real important. You need to make sure you secure this well back into where the abdomen, because if you don't really wrap that very tightly back there, when you get through with this thing, you'll have a nice wing case and everything, and you'll have a nice abdomen, abdomen, that's hard for me to say tonight for some reason, but it, it, it'll have a gap in it. It'll look like an ant body almost in there. So you need to wrap that back in there. So I've taken two great big CDC feathers and I'm going to take them by the tip. Um, if I just take and palmer these up there, I think the head section is not uh, in proportion with the rest of the abdomen. It's too small. And so I'm going to use three strands of peacock hurl and I'm going to tie those in. I just chose to do it with peacock curl. All right, um, now I've got that in there. I'm gonna grab some hackle pliers. All those CDC fibers, and I'm gonna use my fingers to kind of pull them down into the back. Clip that off of there. And you can see that stuff, oops. That stuff kind of goes everywhere, but what I'm gonna do is use my fingers, pull all that down, come in with my scissors and give it a nice haircut. And a little head cement. And that's your burrowing mayfly. Okay, well, let's um, go to the weekly tip. And uh, weekly tip tonight, we're going to be talking about stream cleats and quill bodies. And I had to go in just at the last second as we were going online tonight to add the and more because of what showed up in my mailbox. But we'll get to that here in just a minute. And I wanted to start off with a thing called stream cleats. Kathy Crofts from Wyoming. Thank you. And uh, in fact, I am going to switch my half of the screen to that, that you see the printing there. And in fact, I've taken that printing off of that piece of paper and put it in the chat. So you can go into the chat and, and highlight that and copy and paste it to wherever. And there's an Amazon affiliate link on where to get the product. But let's talk about that for a minute. This tip comes from Kathy, and uh, we'll get back to this. From Kathy Croft, who works at Tim Wade's North Fork Angler's Fly Shop in Cody, Wyoming. Wading shoe studs from a national fly fishing retailer are 20 studs for $33. That's a little bit north of a, a buck and a half a piece. Kathy suggests using ATV or motorcycle racing snow studs priced on Amazon 
250 for 30 bucks. That's about uh, a little bit north of a dime a piece. Get the ones at Amazon and share with a friend or two or 10 or your whole darn club or whatever. But anyway, Kathy, do you have anything to add to that? Oh, that's a good description, Al. Um, as we're moving more to rubber soles almost exclusively that we go out in the fish, um, is that studs are, are very useful to, to keep upright and not falling down. And, but if you're shopping on Amazon, um, it's looking for tire studs. And it seems like if you search for the motorcycle or ATV tires, ones that are meant for snow and ice specifically, not car tire studs that you would drive around on the pavement, um, is that you can get ones that definitely look like the ones that you need. And I've tried them, tried them out. They work great. We received a request from a lady by the name of Linda. I, and her, her last name is Miller. And she said, boy, you people that are knowledgeable fly tires, we um, we don't always know what you're talking about. And she talked about uh, her, her concern and not understanding about quill bodies and quill feathers. Well, I'm going to talk to you about that for a moment here. That's an experimental product that we were working on when I worked at Whiting Farms. And in fact, that's just uh, something we printed on our printer at the office and stuck on one of the boards. And it's a quill body cape. What makes it a quill body cape? Well, at the time, Tom was working on a feather that had would have a, a real flexible stem. And that's what that guy is right there. And in fact, the, the fibers are terrible. They're only good for one thing, and that's to throw away. But Linda wanted to know, how do you put those on the hook? You go onto the Whiting Farms website or any place that sells Whiting Farms products, and the product that they sell today is called 4B, as in boy, capes. And it's uh, you'll want to get the rooster capes for the longer feathers for the quill bodies, but they also have the hen capes. We'll take a closer look at this feather, and I think you can see the fibers are pretty wispy on this stem. The only thing that makes this really good is it's got a very flexible stem all the way down into the butt area. But I'm just going to do a, just a quick, quick body here and put a quick thread base on. <clears throat> all right, that's good. All you do to, to, to prepare for the quill body is you take these and throw them away. Anyway, all we have to do is wrapped just like you were wrapping any body material. Close touching turns of the quill. It makes an absolutely gorgeous body. And I'm just, I love this particular stem. I Pretty good looking quill. Oh, I did do a, a parachute with it. A parachute Adams. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the back part. Now our um, last tip. Our last tip is an unusual one to talk about. This is it. This is the letter that arrived in the mail today. And the only thing that's different about it is, number one, the letter's been opened. And I've got some things on some hackle pliers here with a clothespin so I don't drop and lose them. We're going to slip over here to the vice here for a moment and take a look at what's inside of that. And then we're going to talk about it. Put that aside for a minute. And I've got my clothes pinned and these two things. I want, this is for a quill body sent to me by, by my buddy Jim Ferguson. And, and up to this point in time, I've been tying flies for 65 years plus, And I kind of thought I'd seen it all. I maybe hadn't done it all, but I thought I'd seen it all. And then I this product. Wow. It's a brand new product to me. It's never seen it before. And I want, want you to see, here's what it looks like when you start. Now at this point, I'm not gonna, I'm not, we're gonna run an experiment on this, but this is a, a quill body. It kind of kind of falls in to that area. And what I'm gonna do is spotlight Jim Ferguson. Yeah, what it is is uh this I learned from uh, a music recipient, and I've he passed away and I can't remember what his name was. 
but he was from back east and and what he basically did was he took a razor blade and nicked the upper edge of a feather and for instance uh and then he took a pair of tweezers and he pulled down on that and kind of stripped that fiber but basically here's the feather and it's just a, a this is a, a secondary from a, a duck and you've got the back side and you've got the front side well what you want is the front side and if you take this feather and if you take a razor blade and you nick the upper edge of it okay there's the feather and i've nicked it right about in here and what i'm going to do then is to take a pair of tweezers and i've got a hold of that now what i'm going to do is strip this Tim, that is absolutely amazing. Now, see how it looks nice and straight? <laughs> it's it's like, like Christmas tree wrapping. When you let go of it, it forms this curly hue thing. Here's a whole bunch of them. <laughs> now, if you take a bowl of hot water, Now you see how it straightened itself out? So here you got this nice straight piece like this. And what I've done is I've also got a whole package or a box. These have been sitting in here for over over a year or two. You know, and they come from various some are from uh different birds but when you look at the at some of these you will see we'll have a and that's something we're going to try this in just a minute some of them will have a uh like this one has a dark edge on it and a lighter edge and so when you wrap it you get an effect a barred effect on it and some are virtually all all uh, clear color like this one. Oh, what do they call that? It's 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 a Saint Joe special. Amazing. <clears throat> and this is the quill body. Now, what I did with that quill body is after I tied it, I did use some of the uh, hair the uh, the cure stuff UV cure. Put it on extremely thin. Usually, what I'll do is I'll I'll take the uh, open it up and just barely get some on the end of of, of a knee. Oops, a needle like that, and then I'll just paint the body, and then I'll cure it with the UV light. That way, uh, I'm I'm not too worried if 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 it splits, because sometimes when you're peeling these off, they will split on you. But the other thing you can do with this stuff is you can take one of these that, you know, they're they're semi-transparent at the at the larger end, and you can take a, okay, like here's a red felt tip pen, and I got to be careful. I don't want to mark up some things here. And you can color it red and then wrap it, or you can color it with the orange and wrap it. And you've got two different sides. One's a shiny side and one is a dull side. And if you paint the dull side and when you tie it on, tie it on with the uh, 
when you start to tie it on dull side up and then that first turn, you turn it over so that the shiny side is up, wrap the body and that color will shine through. We're going to run an experiment tonight and I have no idea how this is going to turn out because I didn't even try it ahead of time. I just told Jim we'd do a test drive um, on it tonight. Remember here a while back, we straightened feathers with uh, some hot air from from uh, from the hair dryer. Well, well, we're going to use the hair dryer today to see if it's possible to straighten this thing out by just blowing warm air on it. So we'll give that a try. The nice thing about the uh, this is when you peel it, you're going. It's already it tapers, and so you've got from small to large. So as you tie up the body you've got a natural taper from large to small segment on it. You can, uh, and, and sometimes what you can do is if you do them side by side, you end up with uh, a quill body very similar to what Al's got in the vise there. I uh, makes a nice uniform body for some of those uh, quill body uh, flies that uh, on the mayfly quills. If you dub a body and you can put this on, then dub over it, then when you go over, if you leave just a teeny little space, you get some interesting um, body effects where you've got some fuzz coming up between mm -hmm. the, the fibers and it, yeah. it makes a real nice uh, body for a caddis. And if you make using the larger, you know, you go to goose, you can get some real wide stuff. And the wide uh, goose stuff works real well for, uh, you know, this is a, where's, there it is. This is goose. Now I haven't put this in the water yet, but it's quite wide and does narrow down nice. as you go down, but you can make a real nice, uh, body for a uh, stonefly, wow. you know, and then and then if you if you don't want to paint it before, you can always go over it with uh, a felt tip pen and different shades of brown and make it mottled or whatever or speckled even with if you got a real fine tipped. So it's it's kind of interesting stuff. The uh, feather material, the stem is what what. I think chemists call chitin, C-H-I-T-O-N. And chitin is an extremely strong material. You know, you, you take this and try to tear it in half, it doesn't tear. And it's got a bunch of, uh, it's made from stuff that has a whole bunch of cross-linked molecules holding it together. Now, it turns out that quite often, those are going cross-linked between fibers that are going the length between my fingers. So there, it's very strong that way. But if you take a needle and stuck it in between here, you could almost split that in half. Just one comment there, Jim. I think you saw that while while you were talking there, I was off off on the side there trying to straighten that out with hot air, and it needs to be water. It yeah, needs to be hot okay. water. The, the hot air doesn't work. I will show you also, I'll do it side by side here a minute. I want to show you something. And, and this right here is the dyed orange that Gretchen just stripped off just now while we were talking. And of course, all we have to do is drop that in some hot water and be good to go. So this got yeah. a new thing to play with now, guys. New thing to play with. Yeah, when you, don't have, you don't have anything else to do. You know, I've got... <clears throat> I haven't tried doing it to pre-dyed stuff, but I thought about that. And I, I, you know, this is for some winging material, but uh, it starts out small up here and of course gets to very large at the end, but it's interesting stuff. I don't know what dad used this for, but this is it, it, what fly he used it for, but that's the feather that it came off of. Yeah, well, he probably used that for some of the uh, uh, old trout uh, patterns 
that that uh, were tied back east. You know, the wet flies. Yeah. Yeah, if I don't doubt, you know, I just... He did a lot of quill weeds. You know what's really cool about this is you get this free body material we didn't even know about until just a little bit ago. And you still get to, use the, you get to use the quill for all the stuff you normally would use it for. And you still have use of the feather. I mean, here's the feather. See, I took that off of this, this side of it, but I still got the feather. It's still usable. Yeah. Oh, can you do it off the other side too, Jim? No. Well, I tried it and you end up with some real pithy stuff stuck to it. Oh, okay. This, on this side, you don't get any of the pith stuck to it. But on this side, you get pith stuck to it and it uh, doesn't peel as easily. It breaks more easily. Al, uh, this is Eric. I'd like to do a quick point of clarification where, where quills are concerned. I can see why there's a lot of confusion where quills are concerned. There's quills and there's stripped quills, and they're two different things. Um, there's stripped hackle quills that make up bodies on dry flies, along with others of stripped peacock, et cetera. These are duck quills or goose quills, um, and there can be mallard quills. They're typically used for winging on wet flies, et cetera. So uh, that can be a source of confusion. I didn't think about that, Eric, but you're absolutely right, because I immediately was talking about quill wings, and that could be confusing to some people. Appreciate that clarification. <laughs> hey, everyone, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We're here every Friday night, but for now, that's a wrap. See you next week.